Welcome back, everybody. We're finally getting this working. John Arvos is here with Cliff Schechter, Unprecedented Podcast. We are here today with uh, two-thirds of Midas Touch. 66 percent. That's not 66 percent. Meatloaf saying something about that. That's bipartisan, if, I think, even 66%. There you 66%. Go. If this was like a, a baseball hitter, this would be like oh Hall of God. Fame, next level, six, oh, that yeah. and 666. I mean, all right. Yeah, watch the, let's talk baseball really for a while. We'll see how uncomfortable John gets. I was going to say, watch the sports analogies, or I'm going to start talking about that. Hey, uh, I grew up in the Bronx. I'm a Yankees <laughs> fan. We can talk. I bet you guys, so you're from the island. Island, you're probably Mets fans, aren't you? All right, you? listen, Mets, Mets, listen. Mets, it's Jets gonna be, Knicks. yeah, it's gonna be a brutal conversation if we go in the sports direction because we did, in fact, grow up on Long Island, and we did through. I blame <laughs> family. I totally blame my dad and my grandfather, but we managed to pick all the teams that never actually win except, games. That's a- <laughs> except, you sons of you, you SOBs had to be Islanders fans, and they win, and the Rangers don't. So you, you won that one. Yeah, but it's New York, and quite honestly, nobody <laughs> really cares about hockey in New York. Yeah, that's a really. Good point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, I'm from yeah. Chicago, hockey. Baseball, mm. football, and I well, no, basketball too. But I grew up a Knicks fan, so there you go, guys. I don't know if you are too, but those guys get more One sexual harassment uh, charges us. than wins on an average year. <laughs> So un- un- unbelievable. I remember the Knicks being exciting in the 90s. Honestly, Jordan's uh-huh. always been the sports guy in the family. And I think one of the reasons I took the nerdy route and became the video guy and the computer guy is because I was watching these teams lose all the time. And I was watching <laughs> my brothers just be frustrated constantly. I was watching my dad every week and go, oh, there it is. The Jets lost again. The Jets. <laughs> and I'm like, I- I'm not going to I'm not going to do this to myself every week. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to I'll be fair. nerdy. <laughs> I'll make let videos. Me, let me tell folks who you are, just because yes, you know, there's always a chance. Um, these guys are two thirds of Midas Touch, M-E-I-D-A-S. I'm guessing the spelling is sort of a pun on your last name. Or it not? is indeed. Yes. Okay. Our last name is Mycelis. Is the name? Yeah. M-E-I-S-E-L-A-S is our last name. Mycelis. Lithuanian or what is it? It's, uh, you know, it's one of those Austrian names that when our relatives Austrian came over. Austrian names? <laughs> well, Austrian, Polish, uh, Jewish names. Ah, say, is, okay. it, is it Jewish like mine? Excellent. Yeah, it's, okay. it's when uh, our relatives, oh, came, when our ancestors came over to Ellis Island, they said, uh, yeah, it's not going to be that. And they, they, they made it my oh. I Usually what we tried to do, John, is we said, let's make it a little bit harder for them to find us in the pogroms. <laughs> And so you cut some extra letters out and stuff and, you know, you try to do what no, you can. You're, you're spot on. That's actually, yeah, it gets huh. a little bit darker than that. I think they tried to conceal the fact that uh, they were Jewish or oh, yeah. Jewish descent. No, mine too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, my so. name's Schechter, which is German, but they cut out an extra H. They tried to Germanify it. So mm-hmm. it was German-Jewish. They wanted to emphasize the German part and not the Jewish part because they figured, yeah, you know, bad. Now you're totally not Jewish without the H. It fools me. <laughs> but we're able well, to fool just the, yeah right. That, I'm, that just saying, John, I'm just saying, John. I'm just saying it's a power. more German spelling. In uh, just trust me. Cliff, Cliff and I make a lot of Jew gay jokes back and forth. Right. So John's the gay uh, Greek immigrant. <laughs> if you have any gay <laughs> Greek immigrant <laughs> jokes, throw them to John. Hey, hey, better. you may not want to make those. I don't think no, we can go there. I think you <laughs> make them. I'm not touching. Them. I'll let you, I'll, yeah, I'll let you do the gay jokes. I'm gonna stay away from that. Yeah, exactly. I, I, yeah. I'll stick. I'll stick to the Jewish jokes and the brother jokes. Right. I got you. I got Midwesterner. I got you know, that I live out here. I got a couple oh. of things I can, you know. So to finish who these guys are, so the three brothers, uh, these two in front of you, uh, Brett, Jordy, and Ben, the third one who's a lawyer out in L.A. Now, uh, the three got together about a year ago, actually March, so it has been a year. You're as old as the coronavirus now. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, but uh, got together and got pissed off and decided to start a pack where they basically did videos going after Trump. Uh, expanded certainly from that. You guys got very involved in the Georgia runoff as well. Um, you've done extremely well in terms of uh, uh, fundraising, in terms of also then cranking out the videos. Um, I mean, I can go to we can go to lots of different stuff because right. it's funny. I've like watched your interviews, so I I feel like I don't want to repeat everything, but at the same time, not everybody kind not of everybody knows me now. Well, so I want to say. Yeah, and clip quickly. Going and somebody gives. Well, no, no. I mean, I, somebody because yeah. you know, there's sometimes there's there's envy and jealousy, and there's competing people who are like, you know, your stuff went viral, and you'll hear some people like, oh, well, you know, that was just on Twitter or whatever. I want to say because I don't know, you guys know, I wrote ads for Biden's campaign this past time. Oh wow! Um, I have an ad writing and PR firm, and you know, right. And I'm just to say, your guys' ads were excellent, and so for somebody like me who had to be, you know, keep my mouth shut and you know, and, and not try to try to not embarrass the client. I love that you guys are out there, you know, doing what you were doing. We needed it. 
So oh my gosh, thank, really thank you so much. That. That, that means so much. So Seriously, thank, thank you. you. Uh, and I could give Brett, if you, if it's okay, I could give like the 10,000 foot overview. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that'd be how, great. How you guys, found it. Yeah, exactly. And then Brett jump in, you know, when I mess up. Uh, <laughs> so you're right. We're almost, we're almost the year old. Coming up at the end of this month, actually, is when we bought the uh, Midas Touch domain, like March 27th or something like that. March 25th. Yeah. Uh, so he's that already correcting the, me. See, there you go. Yeah. But basically, you're right. Quarantine hits. Brothers. Um, there's three of us. We all come from three different backgrounds, right? My background's marketing and advertising. That's what I did for the last seven years in New York. Ben's a lawyer, great lawyer, civil rights attorney, representing Colin Kaepernick during the NFL collusion case. And Brett's this kick-ass editor, man. I mean, he's a two-time Emmy award-winning digital editor, worked for the Big Three, worked for this basketball league. So let me uh, interrupt and ask you. really I, sad you're an underachieving family, clearly. <laughs> Actually, I was going to interrupt and ask you already. So is Ben as big a pain in the ass as I am? Because, by the way, I did not realize we both went to Georgetown for our law degrees. Um, uh -huh. but, but I'm constantly telling Cliff after the show, you can't say that. And he's like, but it's my opinion. I'm like, it doesn't matter if it's your opinion. <laughs> Is he I'll, like I'll, I'll a lawyer your, or I'll yeah. answer your questions, Ben, and as big of a pain in the ass, uh, um, as you think he is. Uh, the two of us are here. I don't think he is. I didn't the, say that. The, the, two, the two of us are here with you and he's not. Oh, there, there, you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. He's not here, so we should make fun of Ben. Honestly, we, we don't get the opportunity to make fun of Ben enough because he's usually the older brother on our podcast with right. us, the Midas Touch podcast and with us. But I will say having Ben as a lawyer – is actually extremely helpful because uh, we get to gut check all of our stuff off him. Without, Seriously. You know, and, and it helps us be efficient and it helps us be efficient yeah. with donors money and, and with the process. And it's one of the things that allows us to get videos out so there fast also that we don't have to say, Oh, send it to legal. Let's wait till we hear back. Da, da, da. Ben just goes, yeah, that's good. <laughs> and see Cliff, and see how good it is to have a lawyer. No, See, and this is what Brett does. Also, now, Brett, do you guys Brett's send notorious for uh, for speaking over me here when I try? And do you, do you guys, sorry, I'll work over you too. But all right, sorry. Do you guys put all the money. Okay. I have a question though. Do you guys oh, wait, put all have all the money go through one of your firms and then pay yourselves out each? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> hey, watch it. I'm stopping I, right now. I, some of those guys are are actually friends. I know we shouldn't attack Ella. I still like them. So, okay, so, I do too. So, so I do. I couldn't help it. It was a joke. They have to. All right, back to Jordy. Back to Jordy. It's March. Quarantine hits. Ben can't go to court. I'm working remote at this time. Oh, a year ago, we're online. talking now. Yeah, yeah, a year ago. Yeah. This is the, found, the founding of Midas Touch. Uh, Brett saw the writing on the wall that the basketball league he was working for probably wasn't going to happen due to COVID. Uh, we were just home frustrated, like you pointed out. Uh, we were watching these Trump press conferences, these coronavirus press conferences, if you could call them that, where he would just straight up lie to the American people each day, and it was costing lives. We were so frustrated. We were in a brother's group chat, just basically texting into a void. It felt like just our frustrations. Right. This isn't true because of this, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, hey, we all have this extra time on our hands now. What if we just used it to, to try and do something and actually make a difference? So Midas Touch actually started as a blog where we huh. would write about stories. I would write more sports-focused stories, how it was impacting the NBA and sports across the <laughs> landscape. Right. Brett, more of the political expert of the group, and Ben as well would focus their stories more on the politics of it all. Um, I would actually try, I don't know if I'm going to get him in trouble, we would try and break Ben's cases uh, from, from the site, knowing that he is a little, <laughs> a little bit of a celebrity attorney. Yeah. Just Should be, to get uh, some a source. Uh, a source says that, <laughs> da, 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 da. like, yeah, the source is you. The source is you, because hey. it's your case. They do that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> in major newspapers all the damn time so why not right and then so brett came to the table one day with this uh incredible video we called it are you better off and what it did was it juxtaposed the famous ronald reagan debate speech where he was asking right. the american people are you better off than you were four years ago is there more or less unemployment right. and brett showed the footage of of the food lines that were happening the covid death numbers spiking uh we put that out on twitter again at this time we're still a blog uh the video blows up goes viral for us at the time it got two hundred thousand views we were ecstatic yeah if the video gets two hundred thousand views for us now we're like what did we do wrong oh that's funny <laughs> and so we saw this you know blow up and, and and people started reaching out we started to gain followers here and there we're like hey i think we need to figure out ways to to get this messaging seen by more people than just on twitter let's get right. this on tv how do we do that consulted with our network of people and ultimately concluded that the best way to do this was we have to become a pack right. um, and that's how Midas Touch Pack was founded which is actually like May 15th was so the, wait is it a super pack or is it a, 
right? Yeah, yeah, it's a super PAC. That's what I thought. Okay. An independent expenditure. Yep. Um, but we were so, honestly, we didn't even know like what that was. Like, like uh, my only kind of experience is it was hearing about, you know, like Citizens United and, and right. hearing about like Stephen Colbert starting a pack on his TV show that I used to watch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, like that was really the extent of my knowledge. We of Googled packs. it. We Googled, yeah, we Googled what is a pack. <laughs> yeah, pack super, super packs, super packs for dummies. How uh, do but, I run a super pack without going to jail? Right. Yeah, seriously, I was I was concerned because I was like, well, you should you know, be, you, yeah. And you hear yeah. a lot of you hear a lot of bad things about organizations like that, and you're like, okay. And so obviously, this comes with a lot of also legal obligations and accounting yep. obligations. How right. the hell do we do that? Like, I, I, we just didn't know we didn't know anything. But um, we we decided to go that route. Um, we were lucky enough to have people step in and and pitch in and help us out and support our work. And that allowed us to build the infrastructure right. that we needed very quickly to legally file all of our documents with the FEC right. and, and do all that. And, you know, soon enough, we were running ads on TV and, and, and running ground games in Georgia and, right. and doing all these things that were beyond our wildest dreams. So, so that's what I wanted to ask beyond you, because you guys obviously went viral on Twitter. It was fantastic. Um, I assume Facebook probably similar, or maybe, I don't know how much you were up on Facebook or not. Um, but the key, what I wanted to ask is how much you put behind these ads in the States. You know what I mean? Like how much did you do in terms of targeting folks and that kind of thing? Well, actually, can I make, make it a broader question? What, it's interesting. Yeah. What, what has been your goal? Has it been turning out votes? Has it been changing public opinion? Has it been motivating liberals? Has it been going after the middle? I would say our our main goal was really motivating our base to show up um, okay. in an election where, um, you know, we kind of looked at 2016 and noticed that we lost that election by not many votes. And it was because a lot of people had sat home who had right. previously voted for Democrats. And so, you know, we came in this from a different lane than some other groups as we're lifelong Democrats, we're liberals ourselves. And we didn't see messaging out there that was resonating with people. And, you know, one of the criticisms that we've received early on and that we still receive occasionally is people say, are you guys simply preaching to the choir? Um, what, and what does that mean for right. politics? And one of our kind of comments was, in a way, you know, a lot of our stuff does preach to the choir, but we have the fundamental belief that our choir is the bigger choir than the other side. There are right, more of right, us than there right. are them. So if we could get our choir to sing louder than yep. their choir, then we'll win every election right. every, every time, 100% of the time. Especially so in a was, country where 60% of people vote. Guess what? There's yeah. a lot of, there's, there's ample room to improve that, hopefully. Yeah. And so that was On kind just of our one of side. our... Yeah. Well, and clearly kind of they our, know this, they, or they wouldn't try to suppress votes so much. So you're right. You're talking to a bigger... And people forget how important that is, right? Motivating people because when when Republicans are smacking us around and sometimes not naming names, but some Democrats come back with, let's call them not the strongest responses. Like we want to see our side, you know, stand up and hit back and show that. And I think you guys did that and did it. Yeah, very, we wanted to die. Yeah. One of the phrases that Jordy kind of came up with early on is progressives punch back. And we wanted right. to be like, oh, like we, 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 could, we could throw a punch too. You know, we could, yeah. we could land a punch too. We're not going to be like weak. Democratic voices who are just going right. to sit there and let you say, "Oh, radical this, you know, radical yeah. that." Like we're going to be, yeah. like, "Fuck you." Can, can, can I can I tell you really quick? One yeah. of the phrases I came up with early on for doing online advocacy that I do is I, we would call ourselves assholes for justice. <laughs> that's funny, but it I made me know. think. But it's like exactly yeah. the kind of thing. There's, no, the same there's concept, a yeah. there's a bit of an assholeness to it that you've got to be, but at the same time, right. not. I mean, you guys are really fun. I've seen your videos before. I mean, just your, what I mean is your interviews. You you actually. There's a there's a nice camaraderie, but also just a nice funness to what you guys do. It's not like you're a bunch of really sort of angry old men. You know, we're so pissed off. Well, it has to be fun, you know? but it also you can't take any shit. You know, right, I mean, right, I hate to right. say it. Like you have, we have to hit back. And you know, sometimes we, Democrats. I'm not saying we have to be as terrible as they are. Uh, and, and I'm talking legally and other ways. But when it comes to like <laughs> the messaging, you know, we can't sit there, as you said, and let them call us all these names and make yeah. up all this shit. And you like, gotta be not... nicer. Right. Exactly. I can't stand exactly. it. Yeah. And in fact, when we started making these videos, people originally thought we were Republicans. Why? So that, that, that just goes to show because they were these hard hitting pieces that, that Democrats weren't used to seeing. Oh, oh, you mean sort of some more like Lincoln Project, things like that. Sure. Kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. So, yeah. So, 
people, a lot of people thought, you right. know, oh, they're never Trumpers. I was like, oh, well, I, I, technically I'm a never Trumper. <laughs> yes, but, yes but, never but, Trump, but, Trump, but also yeah. other stuff. <laughs> but not in the way that you're, uh, not in the way oh, you're that's saying interesting. It. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, it took actually a while to kind of dispel that notion that, <laughs> that we were not Republicans. No, and, we're just very good at what we do. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, just because, and, and we were like, that's kind of sick. No, it's kind of yeah. like, kind of sick that like, oh, because our ads are hard hitting. The Democrats can't be making them. Like that's the impression yeah. that people have out there. And it was a, it was a weird it was a weird thing. And sorry, Jordy, did I cut you off again? Are you, are you I'm sure you did. Uh, was Jordy but, even talking? I'm like, all of us have been on a tangent yeah. now. <laughs> but <laughs> let, let me just go back though too, because other than what Brett said about our choir singing louder, right? I, I think Midas touched. It, it, it does kind of everything though that you described. Um, we are trying to change opinions, right? But look, we're not going to change an opinion. Not, someone's not going to watch a 30 second video that we make and be like, oh, I'm a Democrat. I hate Trump now. But we have this thing. <laughs> it, it, it's an always on approach. We've made over 350, close to 400 videos during the cycle up until now that just constantly belabor the point. Trumpism is bad. Donald Trump is bad. The GQP doesn't like you. They don't like Americans. They care about their donors. And we just hammer that every single day. But with great I, creative, I would add, which is so important. I appreciate that. You know, because and, because if you make even if your message is great, if what you're showing people is not like it's it's that mixture that you guys find. And and I think that you had the free reign to, to go out and be as tough as you could be like that. We You know, we needed that. Right. Like I've often wanted to be tougher. You know, as I said, I've done stuff for campaigns. I get yeah. why sometimes if you're tied to a candidate, particularly, you know, in this presidential race, when so your candidate saying we need unity, we need this and that. You know, they let us go further than some campaigns have in the past, and we were able to do a little bit more hitting Trump because of who he is. But still, like, you know, there are different lanes, and you guys jumped in that lane, and it was really needed. So, thank you. Yeah, thank it, it was you. one of the biggest decisions that we made going on. Uh, originally, we were almost recruited by certain people to make videos for them before we officially became a pack. The biggest thing for us is, like, we always wanted ownership of Midas Touch. We never wanted to have to answer to somebody because right. to your point exactly we'd be scared that the message could get diluted um we never try and be anything you know that we're not we've come in this as political outsiders i'd like to say now that you know we've sharpened our tools a little bit in, in, the, in the politics game and have a little bit more knowledge than when we started but we never pretended to be experts in the field we were just fed up brothers that wanted to right. figure out a way to stop what the, the you know the madness that right. was going on now does that how does that change now that trump is he's not gone but De okay, Democrats control the White House. Democrats control the Congress. I know historically doing political activism, it's a lot different usually when your party takes over because all of a sudden now, for example, how are you going to deal with putting pressure on Manchin is easy. Senator Manchin, right? He's a dick. He's easy to go after. People like that. We were talking about him in our pod the other day too. Well, no, but, but it's also easy to go after. I was, I was mm -hmm. intrigued by how many people were like, yes, right? But, but, but over the years, <laughs> I've found... It can be very difficult sometimes. Barack Obama, we had to push him really hard on gay rights, or LGBT rights, because they kind of wanted to put it off for a year or two. And we kept saying, we're going to lose the fucking Congress. We got to do it now. And a lot of the base got pissed at people like me because we were pushing him. How are you going to juggle or pivot now that sometimes, sometimes will you have to pressure Joe Biden, maybe, or good Democrats in Congress? I think no doubt about it. I think we got to keep the pressure up on Democrats to do the right thing. And if if not for, I, I mean, for selfish reasons, right? Like there's things that we want to see passed. There's things, there's things that voters want to see passed. And there's reasons why people went out to the polls aside from hating Trump. And if we don't deliver on our promises, who knows what's going to happen in 2022 right. and 2024. Right. So selfishly, we should all want to push Joe Biden to make yep. sure that he's, you know, accomplishing what he set out to do. And I think he's doing a, a great job so far. In that same sense, I think we need to understand that politics is complex and he's not a king and he can't snap his fingers and make everything happen automatically that there's right. processes there are the joe mansions of the world there is a there is a congress and a senate there is a process by which you need to pass legislation and i think that frustrates people but i think that's why you need to sort of take you know small every small win and build upon it and understand the bigger picture here and i think one of the bigger pictures is that we actually have it's terrifying, but we have one party in the country that is fundamentally anti-democracy at this point. Right. And I wish I were exaggerating that fact, but I am, so, someone said this on our podcast. They're like one of like the far right authoritarian parties in Europe, like the, G, right. the GOP yeah. right now. Yeah. And, we, um, and that's a smaller faction that only has like 25, 30 percent. Instead, they control yeah. one of our two 
I know. It's which is har- which is horrifying. And the thing that always scares me is that Democrats and just Americans in general seem to have short term memories with elections like, you know, Obama wins and then it's a new Congress two years later and it shifts it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And that's it always sucks. But that's OK if the other party believes in democracy and right. you know, we're, we're arguing based on policy. It's not OK if the other party is going to get in power and then start passing legislation right. to curtail voting rights and repeal civil rights and try to institute. Stack the judiciary so that we never get we can never take power again. So, so that's what kind of um, drives me right now and, and kind of strikes fear into me. And that's why, you know, I think we need to walk a line of holding the Democrats accountable and holding Joe Biden accountable right. to accomplish what he 100%. does, but not lose sight of the fact right. that we're dealing with an existential crisis here with a, a party uh, in the Republicans who don't believe in democracy. Right. Well, and as you said, I think we are it's. And it's almost a situation we are all in as maybe democratic mouthpieces or liberal mouthpieces, whatever we call ourselves. But to have to sort of walk our own fine line with our own grassroots, explaining to them that Biden can't do everything because of the mansion problem. You know, that I mean, this is what happens. You're in you're in the majority, but by one seat. This is what you know, what's really interesting. I'm going to go on a tangent. What's really interesting is mansion shows what Republicans could have done to Donald Trump if they wanted to. Yep. Remember no, how it was like, exactly right. right? Remember how it was like, oh, well, you brilliant. know, they speak out, but what can they do? His base, blah, 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 blah. what they can do is one man or woman in the Senate can fuck you so hard. It's not yeah. even funny. And, well, and especially when it. it's that close. I mean, th- there's two words for that. John, they were that we, clo- yeah. Right. That we lived through these guys. You guys may have been paying attention back then. Maybe not. I don't know. But Jim Jeffords are the, is the two words, you know? I mean, yeah. when he when he was in the Senate and George W. Bush won, liberal Republican, too hard. Sen- liberal Republican senator from Vermont. Yeah. When those things used to exist, when there were actual moderate and liberal yeah. Republicans, and he left and he gave Democrats the majority. Yeah. And switched you know? it and to it, our it, side. Amazing. He showed what one senator yeah. can do, you know, and, yeah. and uh, I don't mean to go through all the history, but I'll say quickly, the fact that it's only mansion and cinema at this point, is incredible because usually as Democrats, we have eight to 10 of these folks, yeah. right? When we yeah. used to have more senators from like North Dakota, you know, yeah. and all these other places. Joe Lieberman been, times right, 10. Joe Lieberman, who oh. was just a pain in the ass yeah. for the sake yeah. of being a pain in the ass. And Can I mean, that guy was a vice presidential candidate. For him? I, it, <laughs> trust me, it still I, hurts. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. like the, I, every time I think about that, I'm like, Ugh. Yeah. And, <laughs> so it used to be. So the fact, and, and, and this is important. And when we're talking about like taking our guys on when we need to, but also amplifying the good. What I think yeah. we see, there are people that just are in bad faith on the far left, and I'm not going to go into who they are. Right. But then there's Agreed. folks who, you know, who I think need to be educated, which is oh come on, get, say it, Glenn Greenwald, David Sirota, Rebri, you know, that whole fucking crowd. Uh, you know, they're just doing it for their demagoguery to, to raise their numbers so more people watch their shitty podcast. I digress. Um, <laughs> the key here is that what people don't get is what Biden just accomplished with only 50 senators, right? And a bare minimum right. in the House, passing $1.9 trillion seems like what most people don't understand. Obama's went all the way down to what, John, $700 billion or something? Um, yeah, ish. It's, it's unprecedented. Like we're, we're talking about now, it's up there with Obamacare in 2010. It was the two biggest social programs it's, that it's, have been passed. It's, it's also one of the most popular. It's also one of the most popular pieces of legislation in like 30 or 40 years. Like ever, yeah. Uh, yeah I and mean, zero Republicans voted for yeah, it. Right. Um, I think one of the things to like, I think the $15 minimum wage fight is an example of this sort of battle of holding mm-hmm. Biden accountable and holding the Democrats accountable right. while also acknowledging right. the incredible victories that yep. we had. Like, okay, we didn't get the $15 minimum wage. I am as pissed off as anybody that we couldn't get that through. Right. But does that mean like we we give up and we say Biden didn't deliver on his promise? Right. Da, 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 da. I mean, that was an, an add on to the bill that would have been fantastic. It would have been amazing and it would have changed millions of lives. But like you said, this is a one point nine trillion dollar plan. They not they're not holding it up now to try to go to the courts or try to you know get this policy in there that would be dead anyway because they're not going to get 60 votes on it at this point right um and checks are going out to people right. uh state and local aid is going out to people vaccines are being funded schools are being like look at the big picture here and then let's figure out our next yep. fight and how we're going to get 15 but don't say oh i voted for democrats and they can't even do 15 right. i'm like most of the democrats do want to get yep. this passed right 
Well, and, I mean, and it is yeah. amazing, and that's the thing. That you put yeah. it perfectly. Now, you can be pissed at yeah. cinema for her curtsy or, you know, yeah. whatever. The other ones who voted against it while still saying what happened with one, the $1.9 trillion package is incredible. Sorry, John, no, go ahead. No, it's okay. No, it is something we do on our side. And again, I think it's one of those 50-50 things where sometimes people are wrong, sometimes they're right. Sometimes people are right that we don't try hard enough. Right. That they're like, yeah, you Obamacare. My God, we I think we all kind of felt back then like we could have gone further. I'm very glad with Obamacare. It helps me every day. <laughs> I've got Obamacare. Thank God. But but we felt like, you know, he could have pushed a little harder or whatever. But Lieberman. Um, well, yeah. but, but again, and Lieberman did screw us on that, right? We had, we would have gotten yeah. Medicare for all age 55 and up or whatever it was without yeah, Lieberman. That's what it was. You know? yeah. But um, but but I think sometimes I get worried, like in the primaries, you know, in the primaries, I kept saying, we're debating, not we're debating, we're yelling at each other and screaming at each other over competing medical pro, you know, uh, proposals, none of which are ever going to pass for the next couple of years because we're not going to control enough seats in Congress. But let's all hate each other and tear each other down because I want Medicare for all. I want Medicare for this. I want Medicare for that. And I'm going, guys, or Green New Deal. No, if it's not Green New Deal, then nothing's good enough. And I'm yeah. like, guys. No, like we should be going after the idiots who don't want to do anything significant on climate. Yeah. Not, well, if it's not my idea exactly, well, then you're just yeah. a liberal neocon, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. Neoliberal. Blah, 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 neoliberal. So that's, like, yeah. that's when I stop so paying attention. When that comes yeah. out of their mouths, I'm like, all yeah, right. Just, there, are certain, there are certain trigger words that you're like, oh, I'm out. Uh, but and then the other side's like, Dr. Seuss. Uh, I, know, right. I know. Right. And you're, like, potato head. And you're like, shut <laughs> up. Like, let's be serious people here. Like, <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, I, th I think overall, it, 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 it's so far going pretty well. Yeah. You find the ways to do the, to yeah. accentuate the positive. And yeah, we got to hit them a little yeah. bit, you know. And by Actually, the way, I yeah, watched yeah. yesterday, I was, I was doing research for another video that we're doing. Hmm. And I saw a clip, an interview with people from the Biden administration from before Joe Biden was inaugurated. It was, hmm. I think, early, ja early January. And he was talking about the, what became the American Rescue Plan that he was proposing. Right. And even though it was before he was inaugurated, it was $1.9 trillion. So like you said, Cliff, it did not go down a cent um, yep. from what he proposed then. Right. Um, the anchor, I forget what channel was on, asked, um, it is the $2,000 a new $2,000 check? Or are you talking $1,400 in addition to the $600? They said on that show, we're talking $1,400 in addition to the $600. I see a lot of criticism about it, but I'm like, right. hey, they said it right there on the show. I mean, it was, it, was, it was right there in the show. They said it. <laughs> right. um, and so it frustrates me when you see people you know, criticize and say, oh, you know, Biden and Trump are the same. And uh, I'm like, how are you even like, how do you say that with a straight face? I don't After know. After the last four years. Again, yeah. that's like the I neoliberal mean, thing. When somebody says, oh, they're the same, yeah. but then I stop listening. I'm yeah. like, you're not a serious person. No, you're, so not, you're not, no not, a, not a serious human being. So if I can just say, so since Jordy hasn't really spoken lately, I was supposed to ask you something about a viral image going around oh, of no. you oh, with no. a purse. Oh, Brett, not, did that you there, set this up? not that there's Brett, anything. Did you set this up? I, not that there's I, anything wrong with this. No, I, yeah, I did not. Obviously, this is not my. This is not my doing. I think no, Ben so, might be working the working the refs behind. I the can't scenes. name names because uh, Adam would be really pissed at me if I, I know. Did. It rhymes <laughs> with Harka Lanko. <laughs> yeah, I, I just. I don't want to. I don't want to say anything. But well, it's one. It's a fantastic <laughs> image. Um, I own it. I love it. Uh, Actually, we say fabulous, just so you know. It's a fabulous fa image. Fabulous. There fabulous. you go. Good job. It's, it's not really my fabulous. purse. It's my no, fiance's. No, I'm kidding. What, was the, what actually I was, is it about? Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, I, I was happy to hold it. It was my fiance's. Long story short, you really- Oh, she actually had you hold it. Oh. You really have to understand the torture that Brett's put me through my entire life. And yep. Brett's a big foodie. I went to go visit him in California with my fiance a few years back, pre-pandemic. Right. Totally surreal. Uh, and Brett's like, we got to go to this dim sum place. Never had dim sum. Brett's like, it's the best. We got to go. And when it's Brett really gets good. something really in good. it, when Brett gets something in his mind, we're right. doing it. No, no use arguing. Long story short, we get there. It's like 8 p.m. They're like, yeah, it's going to be like four hours. It's like min it's midnight. Bit, Don't you guys it's a bit of a bit of an exaggeration. Okay, but go. Three hours, maybe 11. And so <laughs> Brett's like, all right. And like didn't consult the group. I'm with my fiance, who's my recent girlfriend at the time. Right. We were just like two weeks in. She's furious she's like oh, yeah, Why are you waiting? i don't understand she yeah. gives me her purse like two two and a half hours three hours you know into it. we're just sitting down um the the stu the the matron comes over to us and she's like okay your table's ready this is now like 11 15 yeah um but you only have 20 minutes to uh order any of oh, you have to leave i'd be pissed and, and my fiance my new girlfriend at the time right. looks at me mm -hmm. hands me the purse walks out of the oh. restaurant <laughs> 
And I just, and, and it was right then when Brett oh. snapped the photo of me. And I'm just thinking oh. to myself in that moment, man, if I get broken up with over some dim sum, it's going to be a really oh. awkward six hour flight back to Ohio. <laughs> I'd be pretty pissed though. I'm with her though. I get, fo- I get the food, the hangry thing. The food, I don't the blame her either. Angry. It was her yeah. first introduction to Brett. The and, family. And Welcome, to the family. Yeah. Welcome to exactly. the family. Welcome to the family. By Jordy, the dim sum. Pretty good. Yeah, it was great. The 20 minutes we had to, to shove it in our faces. <laughs> <and> <laughs> super, yeah. super. Never dumplings. had dim sum out in the Sorry, island? Soup dumplings. No, XLB. never had it on Long Island. And then I went to school in Ohio, so they, they definitely didn't have it oh, there. Where'd Ohio. you go? Ohio State. Or I should oh, say cool. the Ohio State University, because I'll get yeah, the. I was, I yeah, you should say that. Well, you know, I'm in Cincinnati, so I know. Oh, I know, there you go. Yeah, I know the Ohio State well. I've been up there. <laughs> good stuff. Can I tell you something funny about oh. us, us being in different cities and things like that? Yep. I've not seen Jordy since we've started Midas Touch in person oh. um, in over a year. I've not seen Ben, and Ben lived in Los Angeles with me in over a year. <laughs> because of COVID, or you guys just don't like each other? I hate each other. A, a, a combination of things. No, be, beca- <laughs> beca- beca- because of COVID. Um, I haven't, I haven't yeah. seen him once. Um, since- Fred, I'll give you one better. It's actually coming up on two years. Now it's it's for way you? worse for a lot oh. of other people. Yeah, with me and you and me seeing oh. Ben, and we had a trip planned, and then I had a work trip, and wow, well, I was doing my marketing thing, and I I'll just tell never you, made COVID it to you. Ch- changed my year, as it did everybody's year drastically, Man. and uh, in a lot of ways, oddly, I'm fortunate that it yeah. changed it f- for the better. But um, but my year would have been hmm. extremely different. Um, but if, now if, that Jordy's in Pittsburgh, everyone's going to be visiting. Oh yeah, it's like neutral. Ground. Just kidding, Pittsburgh. Oh. Just kidding. Oh, <laughs> Actually, God. no. People like Pittsburggh. It's the best Pittsburgh. No, I'm serious. Get, I've heard. One, I've never you been. Get, people you love get it. City. I've you get rural. You, you people get, like you get beautiful everything. homes. That's, by the way, that's too, the way that I feel yeah. about Cincinnati. Like you've got these cool cities that have history to them that have been able to kind of, you know, do some upgrades. I, I went to Pittsburgh. It reminded me of here. It's, yeah. it, we saw Springsteen there actually a couple of oh, years ago. That was fantastic. And affordable homes, which. You know, That's what I mean. I, oh, we can live in like I, I could yeah, never live yeah. back. I, I lived I mean, in went to college in Philly, lived in New York and DC. I could never you know, grew up in New York, lived in DC. I could never live in any of those three places for yeah. what I what I have here. I mean, Cliff, could you imagine having that display case like in New York City that Jordy's got? <laughs> I got to say, I'm not. This That's is like not the my, size of a New York apartment. It is. is not, I know. This is not. I lived my in place. that. Oh, not, oh, okay. This yeah, actually, I was going to say the Yadro behind there. I was like, Jordy, Jordy collects Yadro. How cute. Jordy, so, Jordy's was it currently the job living. that took you to Pittsburgh, or was it? I uh, know. So my fiance is actually from here originally. Okay. And when COVID started to go Jordy's down, Jordy's been here, living. Uh, stay close to her family. Jordy's been living with her family for the past year. I don't know how he does it. That is Literally impressive. Living, he's living in her. He's living in her parents' house. Actually, that's impressive. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I ended up in Cincinnati because of my wife. So it, it, the, those Midwestern uh, ladies, they get you here. Oh, and by the way, Pittsburgh, if you say Pittsburgh's in the Midwest, they don't like that. I know. They really? want to be Atlantic. They, what, want they, to be Atlantic. they think they're East but, Coast? But to me, yes. Yeah. But to oh. me, here, here's the line in the sand. If yeah. you call soda pop or or, yep. or sneakers tennis shoes, yeah. thank you. You're, you're Midwest. Yep. My wife and I have the Is whole they call battle them? over sneakers and tennis yep. shoes yep. all the time. There's also... Um, lightning bugs and fireflies. Oh yeah, lightning bugs. Yep. Definitely. And by the way, by the way, Midwest, we actually say gym shoes. Just so you know. Oh. Oh, it's very much so. Everything's a gym shoe to me. They say gym shoes. They'll say tennis shoes out here. I, I grew up with sneakers, man. Sneakers, I've heard, and we understand sneakers. what it is. But but you sneakers absolutely say gym. Shoes I like for these. Everything. I like these miseless guys. And you guys you know, have like get it, man. But you guys, you East Coast people have like different shoes for everything, right? Like there's a difference between yeah, you got basketball sneakers. sneakers. And, yeah. yeah, like all the yeah. weird. Yeah, they're gym shoes. But yeah, if yeah, you do a little south from here, from here to Kentucky, everything is Coke. Oh yeah, all types of soda. Yeah, yeah. Like what they'll say, like I want, I want like yeah. light Coke, and that's like seven up, seven up. Or I mean, yeah. it's insane. Well, no, they'll. I've been restaurants like, where they like what, McConnell. Well, I'm just kidding, say, guys. What, no, what no, kind? No, of, no. we love you. But I've been to restaurants where they say, "What kind of Coke do you want?" Which I always thought was great. Right. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's a thing. Yeah, <laughs> he, Jordy <laughs> nailed it with pop. Don't, pop don't get New York thing. on me, Jordy. That was a little Jordy, just, that was a little judgmental. Uh, <laughs> well, I can't say pop. Judge-free zone. Judge-free zone. <laughs> was, it was like yeah. hmm. Even like the lightning bugs and the tennis shoes, I can get with. I can't get with pop. I can, oh, I, I hey, and then that. and someday when there's not four of us competing on camera, I'll tell you my black cow story when I went to a restaurant in uh, in Georgetown when I first moved here. I'm scared to hear. See, look at all. None of you know what a black cow is, do you? No, I have no idea. Zero idea. Ice cream with an ice cream float with either root beer or Coke. It depends. One's a black cow, one's a brown cow. And Where is this from? Chicago or DC? Uh, Chicago, Chicago Midwest. And I ordered one, and the woman goes, uh, "It was this whole thing where I was like, oh, can, like you can't make like a black cow. What do you mean? Well, like, blah, 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 blah. and she goes, oh, you mean like a, a 
a, did you say a soda or something? I said, oh, yeah, soda's okay. I, I like a soda. No, no I, I, said, I said like a soda. And she goes, oh, you mean like a Coke? I said, oh, Coke would be okay, I guess. So we're getting into this whole who's on first thing of, I'm thinking she's saying, do you just want a Coke instead? And she's saying a soda, <laughs> meaning a float, I guess. It was, but anyway, yeah, black cow, brown cow. Very That's nice. whole list. And, and last one, Jimmy's versus Sprinkles. There you, you go. Call Jimmy. them Jimmy's nice. Midwest. Jimmy's. Oh, that's funny. We call you mean the chocolate. Yeah. We call them ants. Chocolate ants. You mean or what? Oh my god. I don't ants. know where you've got in this vernacular. <laughs> this ants from. But He's from Chicago. You know, everything Chicago. Chicago. up that's there, there dude. That's Chicago is not even like the rest of the Midwest. You pick it's just like the most ap- like unappealing thing that you would want to eat. I know. But ice cream. Is that what Jimmy's? Do you like the, the, little, the, little the little Oreo things? chunks, mm-hmm. or as we call them, cockroaches? Yeah. On there? yeah as, we, as we call them cockroaches, as, as we call them the little feces you put on top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the hemorrhagic yeah. fever on there? Or we call, we call them Oreos, yeah. yeah. right, Oreos watch dude. Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> um so back to substance what what uh i mean what else so what so what is coming up in the next year i mean since as i said i was sort of getting to that conversation with um you may have to pivot a bit although do you i mean trump trump really hasn't risen his sordid head too much yet but i suspect he's gonna you so know we're gonna we, we're gonna yeah. keep battling trump and trumpism more focused on trumpism right now where right. the gqp is heading is obviously a a danger to democracy and gqp so for gqanon p is what you mean right yeah sure yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's how we for the the, the gop good sorry it's uh it's just something to bring i know i do I too but say. people people know what we're well, aren't you loving though right now if you really want to stick the knife in and maybe this is an idea for your video you already have so whatever but just trump sending that letter to the rnc demanding oh, all oh, the money oh i mean you could just go after the tell other people Republican tell people what happened them tell so people what happened Cliff. yeah donald trump i mean in the most obvious donald trump type <laughs> move ever I mean, it's so Donald Trump. I don't so think it's more. It's so dicky. He's such an, I mean, Lindsey Graham could not have gotten it more right back in 2016 when he's like, this guy will be the, destroy us. He's a con man. And then they went ahead with all of it and decided to join with him. And so now he's not only like, you know, demanding uh, that they not use his image, which they originally during they being the Republican National Committee, Republican Senatorial Campaign Committee, uh, Republican Congressional Campaign Committee. But he's demanding, he's going out there and attacking them all and saying that all the money should go to him. So I'm not pushing you guys, but if you wanted to make an ad mocking those funny. committees and laughing yeah, at them for how much money they will now not get. It's, it's, it's amazing. Funny. I, I almost pitched yeah. a similar idea to the brothers last night and kind of fell asleep and forgot, but it was going to be something like, like an infomercial to donate to Donald Trump. Right. Uh, and you get to mock <laughs> Lindsey Graham and, and Ted Cruz and all of them along the way. Like, oh, do you want this money? We might have no. to workshop this one, Brad. This is pretty good. It's, it, uh, it's, <laughs> it's, this is pretty it's good. funny. It's I want to make a video with you guys at some point. So we got to talk. I love it. We'll figure it out. For I don't sure. want any money. That'd I just want awesome. to have a good time. That's all. <laughs> and but so, whole... Brett, before, before you dive into it, too, I, I, I think what, what we're going to be doing, too, we have a university program. What the Republicans do really well, unfortunately, mm-hmm. is they recruit very young, right? They get the Charlie Kirks, Candace Owens, uh, the Christian Walkers at a young age, right. making the TikToks, making these videos to recruit more kids sort of like, like-minded right. like that. Um, and they're lying to them. You know, what we're trying to do is, is advance this pro-democracy movement. We now have 24 Midas University chapters set up across hmm. the nation. We're trying to continue to grow that to be everywhere. Right. Um, and if you check, you know, the handles, it would be Midas underscore U Pitt, Midas underscore uh, U uh, ASU, stuff like that. And, and it's just being able to amplify the voices of, of progressives and really Democrats and pro-democracy uh, hmm. for the next generation who may not have a platform to be able to do it. Now, what okay, kind of so stuff do you want them? Us. Wait, real quick, clip. But what yeah, kind of stuff ahead. do you want them doing at universities? What kind of stuff can these guys organize? So right now, it's difficult with COVID. Uh, ideally, sure. we want them to to start, you know, uh, full on chapters at their school where it's more than just maybe the five or six people who are help running the account at the moment, and really, you know, bring speakers to their attention. Uh, if there's a cause specific to the local, you know, community where they are, push the democratic values of that, and where here at Midas Touch are ready to be able to help fund them and, and give them the opportunity to do things that, you know, their school might not allow. A lot of, you know, talking to these kids, what I've learned is, you know, they're part of their local democratic chapter, but they don't really have much license to do, to do much. Right. Cause it's always got to filter up to, yep. um, for lack it's of a better word, mean. some old white. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. some, some person <clears throat> who makes that final call, who's kind of out of touch. What I think we do a good job of is we're kind of close to their age demo and we understand, you know, that they're passionate about this. Now we give a rigorous interview to make sure that you know they're truthful and and want to push pro-democracy movements um and and so just that right we're here to help just 
help uh, the next generation of progressive voices to amplify their voices, hmm. get them out there. So now we should definitely, at some point off air, we should talk, because I was just talking the other day to a client of mine, and they've got, they raised a decent amount of funds on trying to fight back against the right-wing noise machine. And obviously, big concern now is all that Prager University bullshit, because yep. they're getting to kids and mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're indoctrinating them. And you guys are already at 24 well, they, yeah. places, you said? We're at, yeah, 24. we're at 24 chapters, and we have a high school chapter called Midas uh, Varsity Blue, which uh, <laughs> like encompasses like 16 or 17 other high school schools. But it is it like Varsity Blues, account. that movie? Is, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's kind of the do you guys from, have like, do you guys from, have like, uh, you know, what do you call them, jackets and the things you can wear, like little, what, what do we call them? It's varsity a good numbers idea. and stuff? Uh, uh, I like the, Big like M. It also makes it you're Michigan, but yeah. Well, I know you guys like wouldn't. I know you guys are good at raising funds, but I'm assuming you probably wouldn't reject more funds. So we should talk because this client was looking for things. And if you guys have the stuff you can show me, I mean, they really want to do something to counter that stuff. That's so amazing. That, yeah. that, that would, that would be great. And, and we're working on stuff also, oh, you know, in it, in addition to the pack, which is our main focus, um, because we think it's the most important work we do. But in addition to the pack, one of the things we're also building is the Midas Media Network, which is where our podcast, the Midas Touch podcast runs and which is where our, our other content runs and where we're going to run um, you know, TV shows that we're pitching and documentaries oh, wow. that we're pitching and, and things like that. And I mean, the reason why we think that's important is because we see this right wing ecosystem like you're talking about with the prayer use and yep. you know it gets right. much darker than that obviously <laughs> federalist the, society and all the that fortunate shit. federalist yep. society well at the universities right they're indoctrinating in law right. schools mm-hmm. um and and we want to you know build the media that's working to advance our ideals and right. and is doing that for you know i think that helps the republican party be right. always on i mean you know I, I, yeah you know it's I interesting because I saw go, some, go on sorry. I'm sorry we're echoing you you go first I was going to say, I saw Fox News the other day ran a package like that was just like a North Korea style package glorifying Ron DeSantis. It's like they're already trying to elevate yep. Yep. their candidates um, through their media, which they purport to be right. real news, even though it's not. Um, right. And and so the the Republican Party has this whole arm that's just right. a propaganda arm that's doing all its work for them non- nonstop. And we need something to combat that. We, right. well, I mean, we, that's the problem. Yeah, Go ahead, John. We, we talk about that a lot on our show because it's, oh God, it, it is so damn complicated. But, you know, you've got, we were actually a couple of weeks ago, Cliff, we were getting to the whole sort of MSNBC versus uh, Fox News debate right. and how Fox News, uh, forget the fact that Republicans not think Fox News is too liberal or whatever, but Fox News is so in bed with them where, like you just said, all of these up and coming young people, Fox makes sure they get them. They put them on TV. Yep. Somebody else makes sure they get a, a rendery, make sure they get a book deal. Then Fox puts them on again. And right. MSNBC, God love it. MSNBC has never been part of the machine. They're not. No, no, they're they're right. independent. They, they, they saw that Rachel you know? Maddow and before that Keith yeah. Overman sold. And got them ads, and that's all it's about. It's a business decision that there yeah. needs to be something, but it's a corporate thing. It's, well, it's, but it's also not the same thing. Well, no, but it's also what I mean by that is, I mean, obviously Rachel does good work, but it's it's in a silo. It's not like Rachel's part right. of the grand left wing conspiracy, whereas all those motherfuckers on Fox are absolutely part of the right wing conspiracy. Point wasn't yeah. John, we need to that out. Just to be clear, Madden, my point yeah. wasn't that she didn't. Do, I just want to say quickly, so it's clear. Yeah. And I'll shut up. My point wasn't that, that she doesn't do good work. It's that she gets to do that work because MSNBC has a business model. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good yeah. ads. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fox, even if yeah. they're losing money on somebody like yeah. Tucker Carlson's not getting any damn ads anymore. You know, there have been so many people boycotting him, but they're about ideology because in the right. end, it sells deregulation and tax cuts and whatever. Right. Right. So, they so they'll still picture. put that person on. What, that's what, 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 what and Fox we're not seeing Maddow like, uh, at a. Sorry, let me just say this: we're not seeing Maddow at fucking Biden rallies next to Joe right, Biden. Exactly. Like we see right. Hannity next to right, Trump right. at Trump. I mean, right. that's a that's a he's sick liberal, thing. but she's still a journalist. Those yeah. guys are propagandists. Yep. that's yes. the difference. But I, my, but I'm jealous. Uh, go on, Jordy. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, and John. What you were saying, I think it, it's like Fox has cultivated this bizarro Marvel universe. <laughs> if you would, right? How how, yeah. how they bring up these characters in different ways? Oh, that's really funny. Shows and platforms. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, to make them household names. Yeah. Um, so that just reminded me of that. I, but no, but I they like do that. And we don't. We don't. And I mean, again, Cliff and I are a little <laughs> older. We can tell you, like, with the blogs in the 2000s, the same thing. Nobody fucking supported us. Nobody. I mean, the grassroots did. But like of the party and the apparatus, even the activist apparatus, right. like the big guys. John with money, made a name for himself with probably one of the four or five most popular blogs. 
um, on the left that was getting what a hundred, two hundred thousand people a day. Well, it was, ins I don't it was insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the traffic and, and was insane I, back then. <laughs> and I had this sort of period of time where yeah. you know this is pre Twitter and Facebook, but this period of time where I have the philosophy you guys have, where I was going on MSNBC and a few of these things are still out there. Where I'd go on and I'd debate a conservative and just rip the living shit oh, out of them it was, because I wasn't yeah. going to be. Like, I'm oh, not just trying to grab. Shit. No, but I'm it really nice was good liberal. shit. Yeah. I can't play a nice little liberal. I'd go on and, yeah. and just just take them apart. Yeah. And of course, they get offended and was like, "You're not supposed to behave that way." And you know, and, and I got banned for a while for that. Like, yeah. that's and there's no other outlet. No, we just right. there is a whole there's a whole larger question, and I, I I'm going to keep hitting on this point. And again, Cliff and I've been hitting on it for decades at this point, but but we don't. It's like, okay, Facebook, right? That the top 10 things on Facebook are always those same fucking idiots, Ben Shapiro, ben Shapiro. and all the rest of them, right? And I like that. It sounds like he just ben sucked Shapiro, them Gamba, fucking Gino, Gamba, yeah, ben, ben Shapiro, yeah. Ben Shapiro, Damba Jim, Damba Jim, you know, cute explosion, Ben Shapiro, Ben Shapiro. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's, always like, well, it's always like what cute cat videos. Yeah. And yeah. you know somebody's manipulating you know? something when Ben sure. Shapiro, yeah. that's the, who's the size of my left foot, it sounds like he just sucked on a fucking, <laughs> you know, Zeppelin balloon for like I'm four sorry. hours. I'm sorry, um, that's not a Megan, natural Megan, charismatic Megan, Megan, response. Megan Markle, clearly a liar. No one talks about that. You're like, shut the fuck oh, up, yeah. I mean, Oh, did you, did, you, did you see Charlie Kirk went after Harry? Harry is yeah. too metrosexual in all this. I'm like, dude, okay, <laughs> I could, let me speak on behalf of yeah, the ladies. Yeah. Harry's fucking <laughs> hot, and Harry was fucking military when what the fuck did, I mean, and Charlie Kirk? Charlie Kirk is so fucking ugly, it's not even funny. I mean, yeah, I can the, speak to the, the pinnacle, like, the the pinnacle, pinnacle Charlie, of masculinity, yeah, Charlie Kirk. Versus and that movie fucking that, Harry. <laughs> in the King Kong versus Godzilla movie that's coming out, the oh third monster God. attack is going to be Charlie Kirk's gums. They're going to come <laughs> well, no, in. But, but I you think know what? that's what I've heard. Anyhow, but he's, but he, but he, to get us back to the discussion, but he succeeds and they reinforce him. And you know what, too? They have him at all the conferences. CPAC mm -hmm. embraces yeah. these people. We don't have anything that they give them I mean, a gouge chair at like you don't a, have that infrastructure but, Here's, but it's they, also they the pseudo they get this... fox to pay them they get huh. uh, you know i know because i was paid to go on air at sinclair in 2004 oh, wow. you know as the liberal debating i talked about this in the show before but i think it's important mm -hmm. to just you know debating conservatives and it was all these right wingers and me and i right. got to see behind the scenes of, of these the, of the propaganda mm -hmm. i actually wrote a piece to the new york times on it and like we don't do anything like that we just do nothing and they just have yeah. this pipeline of people coming up it's it drives. I don't care personally because yeah. John and I have found a way to make it work. I can make a good living. I care. I'm not complaining, <laughs> but but all sorts of people on the left who were really talented have just had to leave and go get yeah. a corporate jobs. Well, no, but also and be supported. We've lost so much talent. And let me throw one more idea, but then I'll throw it to you guys because you were both trying to talk. Something as simple as actually the other day I did this with a friend of mine. He's we've got about the same size Twitter followers. I started a Substack recently. He did too, and I wrote it privately and said. Do you want to like just promote each other's Substack? Like, like our next article, throw it on the bottom, and let's just both tweet it. And we both got about the same number of Twitter followers, so it's not like it's unfair or something. And he was like, "Sure, sure." But we don't. How about we all? I was actually looking. Like, some of you at least have got around. I've got a hundred thousand some Twitter followers. One of you is pretty close to me. At least one that I look. Maybe it was Brett. And but even there, we don't fucking even support each other to grow each other's Twitter followers. Like, imagine. What we could do if there was, if just this, this collaboration of trying to grow each other and with the blogs, we never did it either. Yeah. I remember mentioning to the blogs back then, I'd say, Let, let's like link to each other a couple times a week just to help promote stuff. Oh, our people already see our own, your readers read my stuff. I'm like, dude, every fucking time you link to me, I get 5,000 more people in an hour. Trust me, not everybody sees everything. We don't, yeah. it, this is a liberal thing. I think we don't, ironically, we're very kumbaya, but we don't act very kumbaya in terms of how we work together. Now throw You're it so to you. spot on. You're it so gets, spot on. And that infrastructure just it for the for the Democrats, it just isn't there. Yeah. And that's exactly what we're trying to do though with the Midas Media Network Good. and Midas Touch and the Midas University program. Like those students, if they wanted to write something for the website, we would put it up there and promote Good. it just like that. We're trying to recruit talented people. Um, we're working with one amazing woman. Uh, her name's Heather Gardner on a YouTube series for the Midas Media Network. It's right. like a daily show style. It's called Divided States of America. And it's exactly that. That infrastructure that you're talking about, right. that the right does so well, it doesn't really exist or it right. didn't exist until we started right. sort of doing this. There's so much room and potential for us who's the singer up? woman you have who's just insanely wasn't that you oh, no, didn't you guys do yeah right, wait is she your guys or were you just sharing her stuff uh, are, you talking, are you talking about missy the yeah. one who did the, i think she's the one who did the pasaki bomb but she did some other yeah, one so that's so that's missy, missy but is she working with you guys or no who, she's amazing yeah she's she, she's she's oh my, working with us miss missy's oh. fan 
Missy's fantastic, and she does have a ridiculously ridiculous. good voice. Oh and my she God. always does these. She does these parodies, like she'll do Britney Spears parodies, and yeah. all all across the board, various yeah. parodies. And she always manages to sound like just like them too. Like, yeah, she's not only a good singer, but she's also a good like singer impersonator in these songs. And oh, she does yeah, yeah. A, a really good job. Um, she makes videos. Some of them are thirty seconds. Some of them could be like a minute and a half, two minutes okay. long. Um, just a, a, a super talent. Um, a friend had connected me with. Missy uh, a couple months ago. Say her full name again, just because we were talking over each other. Missy. Her name is Missy Modell. Okay, thanks. Oh my God, she even even has an alliterative name. It's perfect. (laughs) Oh, Cliff, her voice is so strong. And oh my God. I haven't seen it. I'll have to go listen. That's cool. Yeah, Yeah, she's she's really good. But I would say, what what I was going to say before is that these... Like you said, when you see like Charlie Kirk at the conference and on TV and this yeah. whole ecosystem, it creates this sort of phony intellectualism mm. around these people. And, you know, we look at these people and we're like, I mean, this guy's an idiot. Right. And, but but people look to them as intellectual voices in, in yeah. the party. Um, and they kind of reaffirm that across the board. And what I've noticed, too, is that, you know, it's easy for us as liberals, as Democrats to dunk on conservatives on social media and say, oh, you know, they're, they're clowns. Look what they're saying. It's so stupid. But they do a really good job at recruiting and speaking to their people on social media. And even you don't have to go to the dregs of the internet like Parler and, and 4chan and all these sites to see it. I mean, there's a account on TikTok, which I, I don't even necessarily want to advertise but but there's a a republican uh fan account basically on tiktok that has like 1.2 million followers Um, jesus and and their content is really uh i mean you know it's young kids it's a lot of it is extremely racist and transphobic and you know all cultural issues sort of stuff like that Very, very, very trolly. Like the whole sort of yeah. through line is like young kids like trying to troll liberals or Black Lives right. Matter or, and things like that. And they have more, like 1.2 million Jesus. followers, on, and that's on TikTok. And, alone. That's why we made we made a we made a conservative decision right away to be on all platforms. So we hmm. made a TikTok, we made Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Twitter. Right. Obviously, you can find us everywhere because hmm. the more you can amplify that voice, um, you're speaking to different audiences, right? Yeah, on Facebook, LinkedIn, definitely an older audience. Are you not on Shopify? <laughs> I think you're on we have uh, well, actually, a store, but it's not via Shopify. But, I'm kidding. But here's you, the I'm crazy kidding, thing: when knows? we went, yeah, when we were when we went on TikTok, we were the only Democratic power uh, pack, I should say, that was on TikTok. That's interesting. There was yeah. no other, yeah. and I actually yeah. don't think there are many Republican packs on TikTok either. Yeah, that's so. interesting. No TikTok, but imagine quick, like you said, tick, quick TikTok videos. I've got a friend who just is a lawyer here in town, and I think he spends his day on TikTok because <laughs> he's always going, "Okay, check this one out." It's another ten or fifteen second video, and they really are fun. But TikTok's but imagine, the greatest, the greatest but imagine ten or fifteen second political <laughs> videos, which I'm not even sure what you do. Actually, you probably yeah. well, you probably take each blow. Well, the kind of blow up you do a bigger video for, but how would you do fifteen seconds? But there, there's going to be something there you can do. Maybe I you're said, already please look, look, look at, uh, we, have, we have a fantastic woman in, in our college program, Emma mm-hmm. Silverman, uh, who does these incredible 30 seconds, 15 seconds, 60 seconds okay. videos yeah. where it's very much in that tone and yeah. it's really special and unique and it's something that that's not being seen. I think yeah. you would love it. So yeah. Emma, the first video, we connected Check with Emma out, a, a few months ago and the first video we posted on her, basically she just debunks kind of Republican talking hmm. points and things. For the very first video we post of her gets like 1.2 million views on Twitter. Uh, I'll, like I instantly. may have like seen, goes crazy I have viral. seen her. You, oh, wow. you probably have. And have then yeah. all the media in the world is reaching out to us. And Qu- Chris Cuomo actually invited her, him, her oh, wow. to be on his show that night. It oh, ended Jesus. up getting bumped because Trump ended up doing something insane. Um, right. so, I saw so it was like there. every other day. So it was like every other day. <laughs> yeah. exactly. But like literally until like an hour before, huh. like she was all, all like scheduled to go on and it just yep. blew up so quickly. Yeah. But I think that that's, that's I think interesting. what she yep. does, I think it's part of the you know important thing is she speaks the TikTok language. Like yep. there's a way to make videos. Yep. You know, it's not necessarily a political ad. And a lot Do of people well, put on there are ads but can i ask you on the video front because and i don't want to get too technical here but over the years i've always enjoyed doing videos i would do them rarely like during trump occasionally i do my own little video five to ten minutes on something that happened i had one that went 
really, that did really well considering I don't do that many videos, but I went after Melania on her, you know, I speak five languages bullshit because I speak a number <laughs> of languages she speaks. And like, I was watching these clips going both. She doesn't speak French and she doesn't speak Italian. So I did a video <laughs> and I simply like, and I, you know, I simply did my little Photoshop skills where I, you know, inserted the thing beside me and then showed the clip that damn video going after Melania has got like 2 million views on, on YouTube. But it's the only video I've had do that well, though, which is the problem. <laughs> but but it got me wanting to do more. But at the same time, it's I find it very labor intensive. The podcast is bad enough having to go through and just edit it afterwards. And even worse, if we had separate audio streams and all the stuff that we right. you know, geeky people love to have, it's a pain in the ass. And video is an even bigger pain in the ass. But I've always wanted to do more. How do you how at least starting off did you did you get into yeah. this and not find that you just went, this is too much fucking work. I can't even get the product out. Well, my background was I worked for over five years at the Ellen DeGeneres show as an editor right. um, and working on a daily talk show. I mean, the show you see is smiles and fun and and yeah, we've know, heard about Ellen's show. <laughs> I, I'm gonna add it out like her throwing books. I like Ellen though. I'm going to I'm gonna say I have nothing bad. To, I have nothing bad to say about Ellen. I had a fantastic I had a fantastic experience at the show, like a great, great experience at the show. Um, but what I will say is that it's a hardworking environment in right. terms of, you know, you have deadlines you have to and, crank stuff and out. the show right. is yeah. you have to crank stuff out really, really, really quickly. And so, you know, and I think honestly, I think some of that contributes to the stories you hear. I think people are going into it, not to get into a whole Ellen conversation, yeah. but I think a lot of people go into the yeah, place funny, thinking, yes. oh, you know, she's the lady who gives out checks and yeah. it's so fun and it's rainbows and butterflies. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then it's like, we need this from you by, I, you yeah, know, yeah. by noon. And ah! you're like, oh, stop yelling at me. Were you're you so mean. You're so mean. <laughs> is that oh, where you no, were when the, the pandemic hit? Like, is, is that what you had to take a break from? Or had you already left and moved on? To I'd, I'd already left like uh, two years before there. So okay. I, I, I was there. I started out as like the night guy working the late shift to like 2 a.m. And I, I was running right. their uh, post-production department for their digital uh, team by, by huh. the time I left cool. doing okay, all their Okay, that's good. That's perfect. Then. But basically, that's a long way to say is I was really kind of trained to, uh, to get it out and it wasn't, quickly. yeah. You know, that's and good. do them yeah. at a and do them at a a level of quality that was good right. enough for television or good, good. enough for their good. digital platforms and things. Okay, so in a weird way, doing the videos for that helped me do these political videos, even though yep. the content was completely different. But I knew how to get a message across, or yep. whether it was a comedy bid or a political message or whatever, quickly and yep. effectively, and make it look polished and good fast. And so that was kind of my my specialty. Okay. So that never was an impediment to us doing things. I think one of the things we get a lot is people don't genuinely realize that at, at its core, it's really the three <laughs> of us doing things. And I'm the only one who's actually sitting down and editing content and things like that. Yeah. And so people will be like, I don't understand. Why don't you put your whole you know, video <laughs> podcast out on <laughs> online? And I'm like, listen, I would love to do Just that. Just have your whole but- video team do work on it. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, I would love to do that. But, you know, then that's an extra couple hours of work that, you know, yeah. it's taking away from other things. So we put little clips up. Why that's don't funny. you, you know, subtitle the the entire yeah, podcast yeah, yeah. And, and put out. I'm like, because yeah. it's because it's us, the three of us. Like, I don't have yeah. time. Uh, and so, yeah, yeah. like, we've got that people... question. I mean, you know, we've got that question too. Often I think it's been about doing a, a third podcast a week or doing, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. just like we, we both have numerous other things we do. I also have two kids who, <laughs> I think like me. I mean, <laughs> well, no, you guys get it. They're brothers. My, I, my, I got two. Oh, boys, there you go. So, What's you know. the age difference? How, yeah, I was gonna say, how old are they? Uh, they're eleven and fourteen. So uh, years. Rough, 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 also rough age. Rough oh age yeah, for you. It, it's fun to the see. Though. They, they care. They love each other time. one second and beating the shit out of each other the next, which I'm sure <laughs> sounds familiar to you guys. So the eleven year old's gonna have a great time when he's a when he's a freshman. He gets to steal his older brother's ID. There you go. Okay, not not that we did that. But by the way, Brett Brett is kind of underselling <laughs> himself going back. Going oh, back. Wait, 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 I gotta I gotta jump in on that one. I Come went on. and took my brother's ID. Okay, I shouldn't say I went. Hypothetically, I took my brother's ID and That's renewed it. And and I don't know how the fuck I even did this. And <gasps> hypothetically, because he's a, a five a Greek five four and I'm a Greek five nine and a half, there was no way it was gonna pass. So I went to the driver's license place, got a new driver's license with a high five five nine That's and a half. Incredible. And then when he had to go back and get a new one, it had him down as like five ten and he's five four. <laughs> Yeah. Do you have to like walk on stilt or climb on somebody else's back? And, I'm not like, saying uh, I did it, but I'm saying if I were to do it, it would be kind of a pricky thing for a kid to do. <laughs> that's pretty that's hilarious. hilarious. Hypothetically, it's pretty funny yeah. thing I've ever. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, my my God. God. I forgot about this. I have a cool story. 
Go on, Jordy. I totally Brett, forgot about but that. Brett's, uh, <laughs> Brett's really underselling himself. So, so I don't know if, if viewers or listeners will be able to see, but Brett's in a room right now. It's probably like a seven by 10, if that. He's oh, in that room. Not, it's in no way seven by 10. You're overshooting. <laughs> <laughs> five by five. It, it, he's in that room literally 16 hours a day. I'm not exaggerating. On his bike he's, like the witch? Sometimes <laughs> the bike's kind of for show. <laughs> okay. That's not true. I <laughs> do oh, the bike's for hold on. Hold on. I'm about to compliment you. <laughs> but uh, if, if you were going to build an editor for new media, like, like a video game, and you were going to like set all the attributes, <sighs> you, would create, you would create Brett. I mean, he is, he's creative. Nice uh, he he knows how to source the the footage, like all of these things that that people yeah, yeah. rely on. These large departments. Someone find the footage. Someone get the subtitles yep. going. Someone to someone get the music. Brett just sees it in his mind, and he's able to just get it on screen. So he's can't can't give him enough credit for yep. for for the success of, of so much story. of Midas Touch. And one of the things that we do, and not to give away too much of. Uh, of our secret sauce here but uh as i mentioned earlier i'm a, I'm a sports guy uh we call it the uh the triangle offense or, or the big three and what we mean by that is we want people to know right away that you're looking at a midas touch video when you're watching so we have our top we have our logo in the top right. left uh we have our hashtag that we're going to try and get trending sort of gamify twitter a little bit get our get our fans the midas mighty uh what they call themselves uh rallied up to try and get that to a number one trend at the top right and then we do the subtitles on the bottom um, and we've noticed that to be a real hmm. sweet spot for success for people. So you have uh, been doing subtitles on on our on our thirty second ads, yes. Oh, okay. Our, I was going to say not on the whole podcast. On our, on our, I would die on our hour long on our hour long podcasts. Uh, okay. No, but but yeah, no. But we we sort of figured out that kind of look that works for us, and we've noticed it sort of be adopted by a lot of other um, organizations. Right. Is there like a noise going on? I don't are know. Gonna, are you getting a quake? You're right. <laughs> yeah, I was like, <laughs> it's the big I, one. I was like, what the hell is that? I think so, I think there was a. Uh, I, my elbow was on the keyboard. <laughs> I was making. I'm scared at first. Um, I, like, I pranked Brett one time. I, I was sleeping in his house. This was when the whole dim sum saga unfolded, and uh, he was <laughs> sleeping, and it was like 3 a.m. in the morning, and we were in L.A. Uh, at, at his much smaller place than he is now. And I snuck into his room while he was sleeping. I started shaking his bed really hard and we woke up in a panic. And I realized that's actually not a funny thing to do for someone who lives in LA. I've well, never here's the, th- here, figured here's out. This. So, well, here's, the, here's the crazy thing that happened. Uh, brothers. Is Jordy was at my place. It was my apartment, my, my like one bedroom apartment that I was in. And I wake up in the middle of the night or really early in the morning to Jordy shaking my bed. And, it, you know, he, I think it's an earthquake and I freak out a little bit. And so I get over that and I'm like, all right, you asshole. And the next day, Jordy's no longer there. He had went home that day. <laughs> oh, and we had an actual <laughs> earthquake in Los Angeles in the middle of the night. And oh so I, all of a sudden there's a shaking and the night before I kind of had went through this, but I like kind of woke up in a daze, like a little panic. Then I looked over at, uh, I think she was my fiance at the time. Um, and she goes, this is real. <laughs> <laughs> oh and, my God. I, and I was so, uh, yeah. So the don't do boy who cried wolf on the earthquakes in Los Not Angeles, bad. man. That's on me. That's on me. <laughs> That's, on me. That's so fun. Where are you in LA? I'm in North Hollywood. Cool. North so, Hollywood, but you know, have you seen that uh, the Zillow uh, SNL sketch from a few yeah. weeks ago? Hilarious. Yeah, that re- it really, I really felt seen um, <laughs> watching that, and like you know, like you said about Pittsburgh, like the property values and things like that. Um, you look at these here, other man. You look at yeah, Zillow. Other, it's like porn. Yeah. Yeah. You look That's at these other that. states. You're it like, really oh my is. god, look what I could buy in. Look what I could yeah. buy in North Carolina. No, I'm telling you, man. Because I, I again, like, I went. I it kept getting oh. cheaper. I went from in DC doesn't seem cheap anymore, but I went from New York uh, to DC, and then to Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati is honestly like maybe a third of the price of, of DC and a fifth of the price of New York. Wow. Crazy. I love. I visited Cincy a few times. I loved it. What, the funniest thing about Cincy though is your football stadium. It's just empty. I, like the inside of it, it's just like a like a brick wall. It's, it's really interesting. It has to do with the Bengals only being sort of a semi-pro team. So there's, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. They did that. They they have to be called out. I can't help it. <laughs> and now I'll have a lot of people hating me because I'm here. I'm a Giants fan. I grew up in New York, talking smack about the home Hilarious. Team. But what are you gonna do? All right, guys. Anything to wrap up with? We've been talking to you for an hour, so I don't want to drag you out any longer. But um, uh, sort of what's coming up this year then for you? What do you think? What are the big issues? Any big issues? Any big things you're gonna be focusing on? 
or right now real quick real quick brett before you answer maybe, that well, sorry, I, just both, want, I, I just want i just wanted to mention one thing that we didn't really get to talk about much during this podcast is huh. i know we focused on the videos a lot yeah. but we did so much more than just the videos we <laughs> were doing billboards we were doing digital billboards. oh that's true we were doing Actually, we'll talk canvassing. a little bit yeah, you, you, yeah, had, you hired Georgia. you hired like those two comedian guys to go to CPAC, for example, too, right? Yeah, the, the, yeah. the good the good liars who are fantastic. Oh, that's awesome. you should check oh. out their work. They, those guys are so funny. So I like. Funny. Oh God, I like want to do a whole like TV show with them. Did, they did one. I was watching the one where they they went up to Judge Janine and talked about. They were like, "Hey, <laughs> have you so been good. drinking this morning?" Like first they're getting a photo with oh. her, and then they're talking about her being drunk, and she's like, "I'm not drunk." She goes, "No, I would never do that." And they go, "No, we we like that about your show. That's what's so good about your show." <laughs> Oh my God. Is that up on your guys' website? Oh, yeah, it, all there. It, 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 the easiest place to see it, probably because we tweet so much, is, is the Good Liars Instagram feed because they they have them all up there. But uh, okay. oh my gosh, it's, that was good. So, so sorry, so Jordy, go. You're, so you're saying the other stuff you guys have been doing? Yeah, no, I just wanted to mention that that, yeah. that it's not just the videos that we do on Twitter. We really try and get out there. Uh, visibility is super important. Um, and I just think in this new media age that we're in, so much of what you do in out of home or on television impacts the social space and vice versa. Yeah. Um, um, and so we're just out there constantly. We're doing a lot of things where we're multifaceted and, you know, we're going to keep growing and I'll let Brett sort of explain what's next. Yeah. Well, I'll say, I'll say Georgia, I think was a real, um, great experience for us because what Georgia allowed is for us to hone in and focus on one target yep. rather than, you know, do a whole national sort of thing. So with Georgia, we did our TV buys and we did them smartly and efficiently. We weren't you know, the, the airwaves were so flooded with TV because everybody was running ads on TV. Right. Um, so we created um, for TV uh, three ads, um, three creative ads that we thought really stood out from the pack. Um, those ads, we created a bunch more for digital. Um, but one of those ads in particular was called Grinches of Georgia. And that became like the baseline for every time CNN or any of the local news stations were talking about political ads airing in the state, they would always show clips from the Grinches of Georgia. Nice. Like it became, I think nice. it was just so different than everything else out there Fantastic. that, yeah. Yeah. you know, even though our buys were not necessarily what the packs making, you know, bringing in a, spending hundreds of millions of dollars were putting out. We got so much bang oh for our buck because all these networks were wearing it. And we tried to make it like a, we've kind of thought of it almost more like a movie release mm -hmm. than a, a political campaign hmm. in many ways in, in that, okay, you see the ad on TV that they keep playing every time they're talking about politics in the state. Okay, we're right. going to give you mailers that have the same creative. Um, nice. We're going to have <laughs> billboards that have the same career. Right, reinforce. We're gonna, exactly yeah, reinforce that, the yeah, message in a variety thing. of phrases. We're going to have canvassers yep. that are going to come to you and are going to use the similar language that they that you saw in these ads and are going to speak to you in that way. And so we developed this sort of 360 degree marketing approach to political advertising and being able to focus on Georgia and only Georgia. It was super helpful to do that. And the thing that I'm really proudest of there too was our on the ground game where we were knocking on tens and tens of thousands of doors um, with a lot of people local to the area um, to get out the vote. Um, the and vote I your raise tour truck, Brett. And, and we did a yeah, we did a truck that toured around the country. The vote your raise tour to push for um, you know COVID relief and an increased minimum wage and positive messaging around the country. So I thought those personal interactions in Georgia were really important and also things that we couldn't necessarily do as much on a national scale. Right. And so I hope that we could use that as a framework and in future elections, hopefully, you know, hopefully we're able to raise more money so that we could do these targeted in-person campaigns with people in other states and try to flip other red states blue. Um, well, we have an open, open uh, Senate seat here in Ohio. So, you know, if mm -hmm. you're looking around, yeah, uh, we're going yeah. after that one hard. Ohio is uh, Ohio is Ohio, man. We're, we're I know we've it. headed in the wrong direction. It's so but, weird. Yeah. It's so bizarre because when I was there, it was a complete 180 of of what it is now. I know. Well, Trumpism, as you, maybe you saw some of that when you were here. I don't, you know, it, that the part of the state, Youngstown up north, with all the factory losses, I think Trump's sort of whole nationalistic thing plays stronger there than almost anywhere else in the country. And I think, you know, I, I do think without him on the on the ballot, we're a much closer state. And so mm -hmm. I'm hoping 22, you know, because if you look at 18, we we only lost the governor's race by two or three points. We we came that close in the congressional vote overall. And so it's lean money. Republican, but not as bad. As and now he's know. taking money from the GOP for his own uh, pocket. Exactly, which is perfect. <laughs> and you didn't have Midas yeah. touch in 2018, so exactly. That's see, there you go. But we'll be happy yeah, to have you. 
we're going to be keeping our heads down and we're going to be doing all the things that we've been doing. We're going to be doing TV ads, digital ads, billboards, um, get out the vote campaigns, uh, you know, on the ground efforts to get people to go to the polls and things like that, I think are really important. Uh, 2022 is going to be really important to us, but that yep, doesn't yep. mean we start in 2022. That means we start today. That means we start months ago um, at getting this messaging out there and having an always on approach and keeping people involved. And um, so, you know, please, if you're listening, consider following us, supporting our efforts, all that. Um, we have a the Midas Touch podcast, which is doing really, really well, and we're really excited about. It. We've been getting some great guests and having some great conversations on it. It's available everywhere, and uh, we're building the Midas Media Network. Um, so right. it's it's you know we're just we're spinning a lot of plates. I think we need to be doing a, a lot, um, and 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 just do as much as we can because mm-hmm. we there's still an existential threat out there that we're all. That's facing. right. Where's the best place for folks to go check you guys out? Is it Twitter or is there a website or what's the best? Uh... Yeah, all, all the above. Um, if you go to our website, MidasTouch.com, that's M-E-I-D-A-S-T-O-U-C-H, uh, um, it will have links to all of our social media platforms. But, you know, at Midas Touch on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, we're, we're, we're basically everywhere right, you are. Right, right. Um, and, um, and, and yeah, I, I love the people who whenever we say, you know, follow us on Facebook, they're like, I don't use Facebook. I'm like, good, okay, good, 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 good for you. Okay. We have like eight other places you can find us. So yeah. right good for you. Um, I, 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 I hate Facebook too, but listen, do we want to, do we want to seed, do we want to seed the ground on all these exactly. platforms right. to conservatives or do we want to I like, fucking hate Facebook? I like winning, because, yep. I like yeah. winning better. That, that's yeah. an argument, yeah. but that's yeah. an argument I have You're a lot of folks Instagram, ugh. Yeah. You're on Instagram, yeah, unfollowed. I'm like, well, really? Yeah. That's what did it for you? Oh, somebody, somebody actually did it just for that? <laughs> oh, we get the strangers. Yeah, oh, the I love that. You know the strange. comments that we get on Twitter? Oh, like, there's God. people for everything. You yeah, can be yeah, like, they're... you know, I like green beans better than <laughs> carrots. Or like, unfollowed. You know? They're like, like, oh, green beans. You're interesting. Gross. <laughs> You must hate the Green New Deal. I do like enjoy exactly. instead. Like, I do well, enjoy the public not, unfollow, though. That is my favorite. When somebody doesn't just yeah. unfollow you, they say, I am unfollowing you. And yeah, you're kind of like, think, okay, like, bye. It will hurt all day. <laughs> it's just a very, all day. well, there's just a lot of ownership involved there that I don't quite get. I'm just like, <laughs> you've invested a lot in this, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, no, people, people get very passionate. And the, the, weir- the weirdest ones, like, I could take like a really horrific insult against me or a death threat, like, fine. But you'd okay, like throw like a, like, like, I'm not like, okay with it, but I'm like, okay, yeah. this person's nuts. Yeah, but yeah, you yeah. throw like a, you throw like a weird, like, you know, criticizing something very strange and loud at that. And I will think about it for like, like <laughs> five days. Like really, they yeah. didn't follow me because I said, yeah. I can't live with your hat. Yeah, because because I because I said I wear hats yes. like that. That's why. Oh, I you, that. oh, you see, the, our, our, that was the, the breaking point. The big thing we have to live down is that yeah. is that we have David. Uh, I'm probably forgetting David's name of all things. David Frum comes yeah, on David the show. Frum. David Frum comes on the show a lot because actually he is a friend of mine. But but all yeah. the listeners, all the, the far left listeners, have decided that he's really a friend of Cliff's, and Cliff has him on. Oh my gosh! Cliff is a neoliberal, bah, 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 and they always you invite can't... David Frum and go after Cliff. And I'm always I like, they go after me on Twitter, like, oh, have you gone out to dinner with David <laughs> oh, Frum? And I'll just oh, tag him and be like, hey, what, what are we getting tonight? Oh, we getting you some, cannot some win with podcast guests, no matter how <laughs> imperfect yeah, you think. The podcast guest is you will always have a large percentage of people saying that was the best interview. That was so funny. That was so amazing. Yeah. And then you'd have people, how do you let that neoliberal shill on your show? Yeah, or how do you, you let that Midas brothers on the yeah, show? Who enabled, who enabled, you know, Trump. And da, da, da. I'm like, well, I'm like, what are you giving this for? I don't even understand. Yeah, um, but that's, that's the fun thing. Yeah. And once again, I'm like, okay, once again, it's three of us booking the show. If you want to try to book our show, if you want to try to do this, like, know. you know, be my guest. Then. <laughs> yeah, I'm literally just cold calling senators all day. <laughs> hi this is jordy would you come on my yeah, podcast I have, script, I, I have the script down <laughs> hunt down uh email addresses it's a big part I'm of my day you. i'm gonna sign but off it, here and start calling again no but in in, in all <laughs> yeah. in all seriousness we are extremely thankful for everyone who supported us and and like uh you know we're 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 blown away my computer's making noise i know i heard that we're now blown. too it's it's not yeah. a real quick I, it's, it sounds like rumbling it it's does? um it's like I we could the make microphone. the national news 
If this is like, know, this right? be one of those earthquake videos, you know, cool like earthquake the, on our uh, show, we'll be like one of those like that world shake, series right, in San shake. Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Um, no, but we're I, I honestly so appreciative for all the support because, like, we came in, we came in here as as outsiders who yeah, yeah, yeah. didn't know this world, and from everybody from you know the, the regular person who followed us who got involved in politics because of us or was previously involved, or yeah. you know established people like yourselves who invited us. us the establishment. Not no, the establishment, no, but establishment. people who established. No, John, you're a neoliberal shill for Christ's sake. Neoliberal shills like yourselves. Uh, um, no, we are uh, honestly we're we're so grateful for like all the, all that support because yeah, no, it's 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 kind of amazing how much there there's a lot of great support out there if you just if if you're like a capitalist if you just present people with the right product you know but I mean it's, but you did it's true it was you know? it's it's really mind blowing honestly yeah, like yeah. you know I, I like. You know, two years ago, I was desperately hoping to get a job with like Judd Apatow, and now, like you know, Judd Apatow. DMs now you just want to retweet. My, yeah, now I just want to retweet from Judd Apatow, and he and he, and he usually delivers, which is cool. Like, that's yeah, very like, cool. This though. is crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. That, this, that this yeah. guy, like you know, this guy is watching our content, like one of the best directors yeah. in the world, and that kind of goes across the board from political figures yeah. whom I respect to politicians to uh, entertainers and and the like. So it's. Uh, to you know, just the person who's never donated to a political campaign before, but they saw our videos and were inspired to yep. do so. I mean, it's it's all not to get sappy, but it's all really humbling and and That's awesome. Neat. And well, it's very and cool. You, you guys don't, don't take it for granted one, one yeah. bit. So now let me just throw Jordy. Let's throw one final rap to you because I did really. You know, you do. It's funny. You do kind of sit back and let like all of us older guys just kind of blah, blah, a lot. Well, I know my role in the group, especially when it comes to my <laughs> touch brothers. You know, they're they're very vocal, and then I think I could add my, you know, my color commentary and, and make some good points here and there while they focus on more of the big picture stuff. Okay. Well, I mean, do you want to sort of wrap? I mean, anything else to add before we close up? Since we've all been chatting, just thank you so much for having us, and and thank you to to everyone who continues to support us, just like Brett. Um, if you could do one thing, just go go either on Midas touch.com Midas touch Twitter, or please check out the Grinches of Georgia video. Oh, I think it was one of the sharpest yeah. videos we've made, just super creative and interesting. And then look at Trump, the snake. And it just shows a great sort of dichotomy of, of, of both ends of the spectrum that we could play the on and, and why I think we're so successful. People will be teaching this in film class. I hope so. Hey, well, man, I, I, I meant more of a joke, cool. Trump the snake, the whole ethos, but, but actually, <laughs> but they should be teaching this as far as a how to for political activism. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Yeah. Cool. You guys earned it. Right. What you've done is great, and we we you know we appreciate it. So. You right. guys are you guys are the best. The pre- I was hoping that no, when you said you Jordy are. do a. I was hoping uh, that when Jordy and you said Jordy do a rap, I was hoping he was going to spit some. I bars. Like, yeah, yeah, I was really nervous. I'm like, oh yeah. no, what am I going to rap? My name is do- Jordy. I don't know. Would we get in trouble for that though? I never quite know how that works. Yeah, but but just appropriation. <laughs> you got to do a Beastie Boys <laughs> one. Okay. But I'll. But I'll I'll take I'll take Jordy's response though. All right. Thanks, guys. This is amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for being here, guys. Thank you so much for having us. A lot of fun. Our pleasure.